Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. My name's Renee and this is New Angel Tarot. I'm doing a video uh, review or an unboxing today. Um, this is a deck that I've had on my desk for a long time, like a really long time, and I've never used it. And prior to starting the video, I have taken the wrapping off. Um, and I've, all I've done is just take out the book and the cards. Okay, I haven't actually looked at these cards. I haven't shuffled them. They are literally pristine. Okay, as they, as they've come out of the box. So this is the Oracle Tarot, uh, your magical guide to a better future. And it's a 62 card deck. Um, now straight away, I don't know what I'm going to get here because it says it's an Oracle deck, but it also says it's a Tarot deck. So it's the Oracle Tarot. Um, let's have a look what's in the book because traditionally um, a tarot deck has uh, 78 cards. Oh, and by the way, this is by Lucy Cavendish, who's an Australian, um, you know, magician. And she also is the publisher of Witchcraft magazine, which is really interesting. And look, I'll read the back as well. The tarot is an ancient mystical tool that has helped many people understand their lives and explore their destiny. Now, this beautiful 62-card Oracle Tarot deck by Lucy Cavendish will help you discover the unique truths about your love life, interpersonal relationships and career, as well as showing you how to enhance your self-esteem, improve your health and create positive personal power in your life. Well, that's quite a tall order, isn't it? It uh, goes on, with the assistance of the enclosed guidebook, you'll learn how to give yourself and your loved ones accurate, insightful and inspiring readings. There are only positive and uplifting cards in the deck, as there is always a positive choice, no matter the situation. By working with the unique messages of the Oracle Tarot, you'll be creating an enchanted future simply, practically and magically. Now, speaking of positivity, this... Uh, is actually produced by H Lifestyles, which I'm not sure if this is a, an offshoot of Hay House or not, but it feels very Hay House, like the box and the cut of the cards and the size and everything else that goes with it. Um, but anyway, look, that's irrelevant. Let's just let's just dive into what this is all about. So here is the book instruction booklet. I'll quickly flick through before I open it, open the cards. Listing of the Oracle cards, introduction about your Oracle deck, descriptions of minor arcana cards and descriptions of major arcana cards. And then we have about the author. Oh, it's actually Hay House Australia. <laughs> there you go. Um, so that is H Lifestyles, Hay House Lifestyles. So, yeah, obviously this is, yeah, Hay House Australia. There you go. Um, but very interesting how they're produced in the same sort of format and the same quality of stock as similar cards, similar Oracle cards like um, Keepers of the Light Oracle and what was another Oracle deck that I have of theirs? Wisdom of the Oracle, Colette Baron reed and the Good Tarot. This is already sort of starting to give me Good Tarot vibes or the Good Tarot vibes because it only contains positive cards um, and again you know this is just to this is just to break up my practice a little bit because as I said I've had these cards in my cupboard back there in a wrapped in plastic unopened for about five years and I just haven't used them so I'm going to use them for the next set of readings that I'm going to film today um, so that's why I've sort of pulled them out anyway stop rambling Renee here we go Let's have a look. We've got Suit of Wands, Temperance, the Sun. Let me just run over. I'll just run over the major arcana meanings just to sort of see if they're similar. The Fool, Spontaneity, Taking Chances, The Magician, Intuition, Creativity, The High Priestess, Feminine Influence, Inner Guidance, The Empress, Fertility, Sensuality, Emperor, Masculine Influence and Power, Six, Tradition, nostalgia reflection so six is normally the lovers so that'll be interesting to see what card that uh what that's represent how that's represented and then seven they've made the lovers soulmate decisions eight is the chariot nine is justice 
Uh, 10 is the hermit. So it feels already they've broken the numbering system because obviously the fool is zero and number one is the magician, whereas in this deck, number two is the magician. Uh, anyway, I'm going to keep going. Nine is justice, 10 the hermit, 11 the wheel of fortune, change, action, strength, courage with, with the strength card, hanged man, suspense, waiting, 14 is change, release the past. Um, 14 is normally temperance, so that's interesting as well. Uh, and then 15 is temperance, which is usually the devil, and 16 is bondage, issues of control, freedom, which is again the devil. Uh, 17, the tower, 18, the star, 19, the moon, 20, the sun, 21, judgment, and 22, uh, the world. So it sort of flows correctly uh, once we hit the star because prior to that, the tower comes before the star and traditionally the tower comes after the star. So this, again, it's a little bit of a funny one. But also um, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, well, that also is weird because the 21, there's no 22nd card in the world, it's 21. So again, the numbering is out, but most of what it's saying is aligned with traditional tarot. Um, minor arcana cards, the suit of the cups, two of cups, union, three of cups, celebration, four of cups, fearful of change, five of cups, unfulfilled expectation, six of cups, reflection, seven, decadence, contemplation, relationship, bliss, blessed love life, new love energy. So it feels like the coins or the, the wands and the suits and the, and the uh, swords are in line with traditional tarot. Uh, introduction, Origin of Tarot Cards, we don't want to talk about that. Uh, the card known as the Death Card in traditional packs has been renamed Change for the Oracle Tarot. Why? Because the true meaning of the card is separation from the past, clearing away from old and making way for the new. People have always been reassured when they draw the death card that this does not signify literal death. Now you know, need to no longer be concerned about any misunderstandings or apprehension about the name and the imagery of this powerful card. Okay, um, so there's the first sort of replacement card. Um, the card pre and there's another one here, a couple more. The card previously known in traditional decks as the Hierophant has been renamed Tradition. This is because the card is about older conservative values, the wisdom of these values, and the tension you may feel when reconciling traditional values with a modern life. So clearly, she's removing um, any kind of you know nod to Catholicism, the Pope, or Christian um, narratives. A uh, classic example is when someone is going to church background, they may begin to look elsewhere for spiritual meaning. It can be difficult to let go of the lessons of the church. So, yeah, it's sort of negating uh, fundamental, you know, doctrine. And then we've got down here the card called the devil has been changed to bondage. As this has always been the card that represents a time of oppression and spiritual slavery where individuality can be overpowered by charismatic power or life-changing events. Drawing this card indicates that your journey to material, personal and spiritual fulfillment, the purpose of existence, is likely to be stalled and stifled at this point in your life. Discovering who you are and may mean separation, even from someone you feel you love. Who you truly are is worth discovering. Letting go of this bondage will allow you to shine. One more important change, the traditional decks, there are cards that represent people called the court cards however as the major arcana are always indicate powerful people in life these are the cards to look for when trying to discover exactly who is playing a vital role in your destiny so she's removed the court cards which makes it 62 because there's 16 court cards so then we have yeah uh 78 so 72 62 plus 16 is 78 so she's taken away the court cards. Uh, the tarot's purpose is to fill better choices, what deal wisely with difficult situations. Best of all, they'll reintroduce a sense of the sacred into your everyday life, which will raise your self-esteem 
and make every day just a little bit more magical. Uh, it's practical magic, safe, positive and helping hand for those fortunate souls wishing to lead a more enchanted, more meaningful life. I just had a thought as well. Um, I mean, witchcraft and you know, because Lucy is obviously a practicing witch, she uh, has published this witchcraft magazine as well. So she's probably removed the court cards as well because of the colonialism uh, association with that. I'm speculating. Uh, don't hold me to that. I could stand corrected. If anyone else knows more, they can share. Um, about your oracle deck, uh, cups, wands, cords, uh, coins and swords, just outlining uh, the zodiac, how to care for your cards. Don't really need to read that. Space, cleansing and ritual. Here are some practices to uh, achieve a high quality reading. Center your energy and nurture yourself. Why ritual cards are so important. Uh, who should work with the cards. She's saying why cards are so wonderful and then it says take your cards and shuffle carefully. Divide the deck into three with your left hand. Put the deck back together and this is the Oracle Universe declares most help you in the present moment. The second way is to simply choose a card you wish to be inspired by. Um, who should work with the cards? I believe that it's definitely best to learn by reading with your very own personal Oracle deck and your special self. As you do this over time, your Oracle Tarot will become infused with your own personal energy. Yada, yada. Okay, cool. And then she's put some spreads in here as well, which is past, present and future, which is pretty standard. And then she's actually used the Celtic Cross as well in here too. So that's pretty standard as well. All right. Well, I haven't shuffled the cards, so I'll just um, exactly go through the walkthrough. Here's the back, which is really quite nice. I love the colours, actually, because this is sort of my palette. My home is actually painted in these colours as well, teals and greens. Um, so this is really pretty. And I'm actually wearing a lot of stars today because I thought, yeah, I just want to wear my star. I'm actually wearing my, um, my uh, Eden star here, which is, that's a bit trippy, isn't it? And I've also got a star, my pentagram earring in. So, but let's have a look from top to bottom. All right. So number one, we have new career moves. Now, this is great because I actually refer to the Ace of Pentacles always as a job offer. So that makes sense to me. Uh, one, one of cups, new love energy, which is also very similar to how I would interpret um, the card. We have Ace of Swords, and this says Status Surge, which is really interesting. And she's got a really cool um, painting here. So obviously she's hand-painted all of these as well. And I'm an air sign, so I actually love this. Uh, status Surge, Ace. Uh, this is the root of... Uh, the root of air or the ace of swords and then we have follow your dreams i'm assuming this is ace of wands because she's holding a wand which is really cool as well i'm actually starting to really like these cash flow two of pentacle okay so like traditionally this would be two of pentacles right so just so you got a bit of a heads up like for me this is very playful i mean this is just a playful deck if you're a, a serious reader and you know you know the the intensity of symbolism and you know the astrology behind all this and blah 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 then you're going to go okay this is really basic but you know what it's actually just really fun um i think this is what i was needing it's just a little bit of an injection of light and color and a bit of fun into the next set of readings i'm going to do so that's two of coins oh so we're going to go through all the ones then all the twos etc and cetera. so that's that's fine uh two of cups now oh, this is cute so we've got a little bit of a parisian alfresco moment here and it says loving union teamwork then we have Two of Swords, Balance Restored and Resolution, which is also quite nice. 
I'm sort of feeling though that the energy between these two characters is a little bit distant. Um, I don't know if that was on purpose, but I guess it's sort of standing your ground and just being, you know, holding space for that, which sort of makes sense. And then we have the two of wands again. I love the fact that with the wand energy, she's actually, I'll just look at the other one. So if you look at the, the, the ace and then the, the, the two, she's sort of created this sort of spiral here, sort of indicating firepower, which is really fun. I love, I like that. So this is the two of wands, uh, your own power. Three of coins. Okay, so now we're getting into the three. Purposeful action. So this is kind of cute. Celebration bounty is the three of cups. Now this is interesting because normally you'll have three women in this card and in this situation there's only one woman. Um, it's traditionally known as Mercury and Cancer. I'm not sure why this girl has three cups balancing on her head. I'm not too sure about this card, but anyway, three of cups. Unexpected revelation. Uh, this is the three of swords. Okay, so this is interesting. You've got a person here who's sitting next to a coffin uh, or some sort of Pandora's box even. And some sort of, there seems to be, a heartbreak here down here so she's she's sort of honored the the heartbreak situation um interesting that she said there are only positive cards in the deck yet she's still put this card in in a very kind of morbid looking <laughs> painting unexpected revelation okay so that traditionally that's satin in libra yeah so it's about you know disappointing relationships and lessons learned from or hard lessons learned from from marriage and other relationships because Libra is the seventh house. Okay. Sorry, I can't help myself. I've just got to, you know, expand on this stuff because otherwise it just turns into a bit of a, you know, elementary class and I don't really want to go there. Um, anyway, three of wands, dreams of chance. Now, this is really weird because in this one, she does have three women. Now, wouldn't it have made more sense for her to do these three women with three cups and do the three of cups instead of having that lady with three coffee cups on her head have a wand? I don't know, she sort of wield a wand here in terms of getting results and, you know, sun in Aries, which is essentially what this card is, which is our current decan. So traditionally this card, I'll just get it because I've actually got it here on hand, is, is this card right so if if oh sorry it's three of wands this is three of cups mercury and cancer i've got it wrong but anyway my point being is three of cups would normally be three women coming together and it's kind of this is water this is fire whereas it should be i, don't, I think it should be the other way around whatever i'm just nitpicking um, but these are cool i mean maybe this as well dreams of chance she's thinking sort of more three you know three witches or maiden mother crone or you know the sort of the trinity of the divine feminine sort of power um yeah it's like a triptych which i get that sort of makes more sense that's probably the the, the reason behind it let's have a look in the book just real quick because i can be very quick to judge have you noticed <laughs> Let me look at three of wands here. Here we go. Now we're talking. Things are going very well and you're experiencing true growth. This is a destiny ride you were meant to take. And while it's had a bumpy start, this venture could end up being a winner. You may actually be questioning aspects of your life at the moment. At the very least, you're dreaming of wider pastures. Pirate ships with booty, imports and exports and becoming a force, a force to be reckoned with. You may wish to trade with people if you wish to establish the right kind of business with enough generosity. 
the good karma points you'll be earning will see you through. Destiny is a trip. Yeah, so I beg your pardon. <clears throat> I was trying to compare the Three of Cups with the Wands, but this is essentially the Three of Wands. So this is your pirate ships and your, you know, trade coming in and blah, blah, blah. So, yeah, kind of cool. All right, let's move on. Steady process, which is a four of pentacle or four of coins and this is normally sun in capricorn but i like the way the, the little description here um dreams of chance steady process steady process okay i would probably be using this deck more because of my own personal knowledge rather than just kind of you know either memorize these meanings because they're quite similar anyway they're a derivative of the right of weight um, and just sort of know that this is coming through. Uh, recovery and retreat, four of swords. Oh, I like the four poster bed here with the four swords. That's kind of cool. That's cute. Uh, nervous about chance. So this is four of cups. Woman making cups of tea. Recharge your hopes, four of wands. So this is Venus in Aries coming through now. <laughs> Budget lessons, five of pentacles or five of coins. And this is funny because these are lessons, but she's also crying, which is quite funny. But this is, um, again, um, Mercury in Taurus. That's interesting because you would think it would be Saturn in Taurus because it's a lesson, but it's not. It's, it's you know... Uh, five of Cups, Unfulfilled Expectations. So this is Moon in Scorpio traditionally. Uh, sorry, Mars in Scorpio. Five of Cups. And then we have Test of Courage, Five of Wands. This is normally the Argy Bargy card, you know, conflict. Saturn in Leo. Challenges. And problems, five of swords. Okay, this is Venus in Aquarius. Um, learning when to walk away from a situation. And look, to be perfectly honest, if I didn't know what I know about tarot, um, I would still, I guess, find connection with these cards to an extent. But I guess they would sort of... Some of them are more abstract than others. I mean, this is why I've always sort of stuck to the traditional framework because it gives you that base. There's no sort of, you know, you know what you're dealing with. Whereas when you get a, you know, a random artist or, you know, just these independent cards, it's an interpretation, you know, so it's just an interpretation. Six of coins, unexpected help. This is nice. I like that. This is Moon in Taurus. Reflection, Six of Cups. So this is Sun in Scorpio. But this is a bit of an interesting one because this kind of, she's got question marks on the bottom of her dress here. And really, this sort of more reminds me of Seven of Cups because it's about choice and, you know, choosing the right cup. And then there's questions along the bottom here. So, you know, uh, Six of Wands, Wisdom of Experience. So that's victory normally. Jupiter and Leo, Six. Mm -hmm. Six of Swords, Continuous pro uh, Progress. So that's normally the, 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 shit, the little boat that goes across the water. Six of Swords. And then we have Seven of Coins, Opportunity. This is normally Saturn in Taurus, which is about reassessment rather than opportunity, but yeah. Seven of Cups. Now this is Decadence. So there are cups here, which is kind of cute, and she's got different people, sort of three women, sort of sitting in these. It reminds me a little bit of Dita Von Tees in the in her burlesque shows in the big champagne glass 
which is kind of fun. But, you know, again, I'm not going to harp on about it, but it's not, you know, 100% with, with right away or whatever, but they're cute. They're really cute drawings or, you know, paintings. Uh, Seven of Wands taking a stand. So this is normally the back off card. Mars in Leo. Seven of Swords. Uh, what is this? Ego, internal politics. So interesting because normally this is the guy. This is Moon in um, Aquarius. This is normally like the guy, the trickster, who wants to get away with all the, all the swords. And then we have Eight of Coins. Talent and skills. This is Sun in Virgo traditionally. The guy who's sitting on the bench and he's doing all the pentacles. But this is coins. And it's interesting as well because she has used coins as opposed to pentacles, which is kind of interesting because, you know, if she's an editor of witchcraft, you think she would have used that. But she's obviously just making it uber, you know, friendly. Uh, contemplation. Eight of Cups, so this is usually walking away, you know, Saturn in Pisces, learning when to walk away. Eight, Caring for Yourself, Eight of Swords. This is usually Jupiter in Gemini, Analysis Paralysis, but in this one it's Caring for Yourself, Internalizing Your Mental Health, I would say, more to the point. <clears throat> this is a cute card. Eight of uh, Wands, which is normally Mercury in Sagittarius, but she's put here Swift Decisions, which is very much in line with, <clears throat> you know, travel, moving quickly. She's sort of, you know, astral traveling here a little bit. It's quite funny. And also the nine, uh, eight here is just they're all upright. So they're not actually moving, whereas the Wands are normally moving, but, you know, it's still a cool card. I like this. This is quite cool. Good Fortune, Nine of Pentacle. Now, this is Venus in Virgo normally, and she's also usually my second favourite card, and I would say that she's pretty sassy. Like, she's definitely a modern take on, you know, the woman in waiting in the garden. <clears throat> the normal, the woman who's waiting for her, her suitor to come and, you know, court her. Relationship Bliss is Nine of Cups. Again, this is the Wish Fulfillment card. Um, it's cute. Again, you know, lovely, great colours here. I like the colours. I love the yellow, yellow heart here with the balloon. It's kind of cute. You know, I mean, I think she's done a really lovely job. Um, and, you know, when you start working with different decks or you start, you know, looking at other things, it's just giving you a new perspective. It's just keeping things a little bit fresh and knowing that, you know, your your knowledge base is always going to be there um, when you learn tarot. But then when you pick up other decks, you can sort of adapt um, based on what you know, obviously. Stress and anxiety. This is Mars in Gemini. This is actually my birth card. <laughs> What's your birth card? Let, let me know your date of birth in the comments if you want to find out what that is or you can look at my Decan Diaries uh, course on my website and there's a free ebook there. You can download the chart and look around the wheel and see which minor arcana card is yours. So that makes sense. And the fact that she's also got red hair, which is kind of cute because Mars, you know, it's a nod to Mars. <laughs> Pause and observation. Nine of Wands. This is the Wounded Warrior normally. Moon in Sagittarius. Enjoying the outcome. Ten of Cups. Oh, this is feel. I feel this needs to be me. I feel this needs to be my pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. I need a holiday. You know. <laughs> so this is normally yeah. Um, Ten of Cups. Oh, I beg your pardon. No, I, I stand corrected. This is Ten of Coins by the looks of it. This is the next one's Ten of Cups. So Ten of Coins is uh, Mercury in Virgo. This is normally the Tree of Life 
you know, card with the with the symbols, the, the coins in the shape of Kabbalah. You know, retirement, the end of the road, time to take a permanent holiday. And then you've got your Ten of Cups, which is the Bliss card, uh, getting everything you want, growth, opportunity, manifestation, Mars in Pisces. Again, there's red behind this card too. So she really has actually, I don't know if it's deliberate, but she actually has thought about the colour palette when she's using it too. Because yellow here as well in the sword, that's air, air <clears throat> traditionally. So she is sort of, there is, there, is a, there is process behind these paintings for sure. Healing, sound, uh, sorry, healing, second chance, ten of swords. So this is sun in Gemini, but this is also an ending. Like with every ending, there's a new beginning. So it's a victory. It looks like a victory card, which I always see it as a victory card traditionally, even though there's no knives in the back on this card. This is more like, hey, time to celebrate. This is a wake-up call. Put down your burden, ten of wands. So that's also quite light. Saturn in Sagittarius. Nostalgia, reflection, tradition. Okay, so this is where we get into the... So they were the minors. And this is now where we get into the majors. All right, so... <clears throat> so far, there's no numbers on the cards. So let's look at this. Tradition. So this is obviously the replacement for the Hierophant card. Okay. Um... Nostalgia and tradition. Okay. I'm not sure why she's looking out the window. <clears throat> I might actually have a quick look in here just to sort of clarify that. You know, I'm not going to read through the book on every single card. I just, well, we'll be here all day. It's a bit weird that they're not in order, though, in the book. Tradition is apparently number six, but it says, they say it's the way the world is, the established order. What most folks accept as some kind of natural order, a fate accompli, a fait accompli, <clears throat> about which there's nothing you can do. These are the sorts of conservative messages you'll be hearing during the time, during this time. So remember, no knee-jerk reactions. Simply listen and wonder, is this really true? Is there a best way, a right order, a code that's untouchable in its perfection? When working on your own personal code of ethics, you would do well to listen to the wisdom of others, be respectful, then without making a big noise about it, choose what works for you. Allow others to know what is right for them. This is your time to learn what you truly feel to be the best way for you to walk through this world. Oh, I love this. This is nice. So... Yeah, I, I absolutely love this. I think this is a nice sort of alternative to the Hierophant. Less structured, find your own way. I love it. I love it. I love it. Okay, you're winning me over, Lucy. The world be, uh, rewards expansion and destiny. So she she's normally my favorite card in the whole tarot, the world card. But that's, that's cool too. I'm not going to read through the book again, but it looks quite similar to completion and, you know, sitting in a place of, you know, ownership, which is also really, really powerful. The Wheel of Fortune, change action. Okay, this is her Wheel of Fortune art. The Tower, mm, discovery, change and adjustments. So once again, this is not very destructive. This is just a tower. Um, what's interesting is you can see through it. She's kind of used yellow here and it's not joining up here, but it almost they almost look like holes within the tower. So being able to see through something. The sun, now oh, this is gorge. So the sun is awards, camaraderie and affection. 
the star, hope, inspiration, nature, the magician, intuition, taking chances. So this is her magician, which is on the on the box. A female magician. How about that? Let's read what she has to say about the magician because really the magician is the star of the show. Um, I'm going to get my act together. Do, do, do. It's Friday here. I'm about to start the readings. I know you guys have been waiting like nearly two weeks now. I'm so sorry, but these things take time. You know, I don't want to rush myself anymore. I'm tired of doing that. The major event cards, Major Arcana, the Fool, and then we have the Magician. Here we go. I'll hold this up so you can read. You can see as well. You are now entering a time when your confidence and abilities will blossom. You may find you are able to convince people simply that your skills of persuasion are sharper than ever before and that you can complete complex tasks with with ease and impressive finesse revel in the moment love it love it the lovers soulmates decisions well this is very traditional i love this artwork beautiful now <laughs> i'm going to say something here because when was this actually published let me have a quick look in the book let's have a look here 2003 all right my dears so this is this deck is 21 years old okay it's been around for a couple of decades and the lover's card here is a man and a woman now on the right of weight it's also a man and a woman but just so you guys know as well obviously over the last 20 years there's been a huge resurgence of you know the love of tarot and diversity in decks so I just love the fact that this is, you know, this is masculine and feminine. She's honouring, you know, the divine union. Um, but again, I'm not, I'm not sort of trying to delineate here. I'm just making a, making a point that, you know, decks that were released tw over 20 years ago, um, you know, this is all essentially just, divine feminine because it is a very feminine deck i mean essentially every every person in this car in the deck so far has been female but then again the man here does have a little bit of a curl in his hair so it could be a masculine woman who knows but traditionally the card does have a man and a woman and i love this artwork i think it's great all right move on the high priestess feminine influence inner guidance Wow, so she's very much like Kali. That's what it reminds me of here, the goddess Kali. She's blue and, you know, taking on whatever it is that you want to. Manifestation. Feminine influence, inner guidance. Yeah. And I just love the colours of this deck. I think this is one of my new faves. And, you know, it's an old school deck. This has been around for a long time. You know, I've, it's new to me, put it that way, it's new to me. Next we have the Hermit, Wisdom of Solitude, also beautiful. Absolutely love this card, this is divine. Beautiful, 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 love it. The Hanged Man, Suspense, Waiting. So this is interesting as well because... There are, it looks to be two sort of male figures here um, and they're actually on a seesaw. So it is about balance, restoring balance and maybe, yeah, just waiting, suspense. When is it going to sort of teeter the other way? Which removes the, you know, the Christian you know, inverted crucifix that's normally on the uh, Hanged Man card. The Fool, 
Spontaneity. This is great. Love her. She's amazing. Oh, that used to be me. I used to look like that. <laughs> Next we have the Empress, Fertility, Sensuality. <clears throat> this is Gorge. Absolutely Gorge. Look at it. Isn't it divine? Beautiful pictures, beautiful artwork. Love that. That's really nice. Then we have the Emperor, Masculine Influence and Power. And really interesting that she hasn't used, like the coat here or the cloak um, isn't red, which is traditional. She's sort of gone the opposite. She's gone the feminine power because it looks, this person looks like a woman. It looks pretty feminine to me. <clears throat> But she's embodying, again, the, the blues and the purples, which is more receptive, you know, uh, feminine feminine power. Love this too. The chariot, <laughs> the inspired warrior. And the chariot in this has been depicted as a shopping, looks like a shopping trolley. Um, <laughs> getting stuff done. I think that's funny too. Although, you know, one might say as well, well, that's a bit, you know, sexist, you know, why does the women have to always go shopping, blah, blah, blah. But it's old school. But let's face it, I don't let my husband go shopping because he never gets what I need. He always misses something. It's like, oh, we're going to make a meal, but we've missed this ingredient or whatever. Sisters are doing it for themselves. <laughs> Temperance, we have balance and harmony. Now, this character is standing in a tree pose, sort of like a tree pose, um, on a ball. So she's balancing and creating art here. She sort of reminds me of a, like a arrow performer, but she's sort of, it's a bit more circusy. It's a little bit like balancing on a ball here as a circus act. <clears throat> but it is... It's supposed to be spiritual alchemy, um, and I guess balance, in a sense, is is a form of alchemy. It's a it's a hermetic principle. Strength. We have courage and open heart. I love this too. Look at that. It's really strong. And you know, throughout the, I I, I like the fact that she's also, and as a graphic designer myself by trade, okay. I like that she's played with the text in different ways as well throughout the deck because it's always a tough one, like how do you incorporate, if you, if at all, um, you know, text within the artwork. It's, it's that in itself as an art. Um, and she's done quite well. The typeface is a little dated because this is very, you know, this is early 2000, this is end of the 90s. So this is very 90s kind of typeface. But it's still cute. I like it. Justice, uh, honourable choices. And again, she's used the scales here, which is pretty standard. I like the, um, the colour palette here, the purple and the green. So they're complementary. Judgment, putting the past to rest. She's sort of climbing a stairway here and there's a face on the stairway but it looks like a leaf as well. It kind of reminds me of a leaf and you can see there's a little face here too. So she's sort of moving upwards. It's a rebirth kind of energy. Putting the past to rest. Pluto is also, this is kind of a Plutonian kind of card. Um, you know. It's a resurrection. It's like a new you. It's a, a new beginning. Um, chance, release the past. Sorry, change, release the past. So I can't remember. Oh, this was the devil card, I think. Change. I oh, know bondage was the devil. What was the change replacement? <clears throat> I read it, but I've forgotten it. 
Oh, the death card. Yes, okay. So this is traditionally the death card and she's called Change. And again, release the past. Judgment is putting the past to rest and then she has release the past here with change. <clears throat> so both of these are Scorpio cards. This is Pluto and this is traditional Scorpio. And they both use the word change. So that makes sense too. Um, last but not least, we have bondage, which is issues of control, freedom, And this woman is, or this person is, rock climbing. But it's really well done. Like it's kind of held, but it's also a bit treacherous. Like I like the treachery aspect of it. It's kind of cool. All right, guys. So that's my walkthrough. And there's the back again, in case you forgot, of Lucy Cavendish's the Oracle Tarot, published in 2001, and by Hay House Australia. There you go. So, guys, until next time, uh, thanks for watching. If you're a new subscriber and you made it all the way to the end, thank you very much. If you would like to give the video a thumbs up, please do, because it helps my channel a lot, and hit the subscribe button. Uh, if you'd like to see more videos and daily readings, I do bits and pieces as well about the royal family and other you know, bits and bobs from time to time. Um, check out my website, newangeltarot.com. If you've ever wanting, if you're wanting to get a private reading with me or learn a bit about tarot, everything you need to know about me is in the description below uh, and my website, once again, newangeltarot.com. So until next time, guys, I'll see you in my next video. Bye.